morning I thought I'd um, show you how to make um, a bit of a collagey background. Um, I thought I'd use the layering stencils, the essential foliage today. And also for those people who don't have the Ultimate, then I just want to show you that you can actually use these layering stencils without that tool. So this is the card I'm going to make. So I've got something missing there. There's the flower that I was going to put onto it. Um, now the backdrop is what I wanted to show you and it can be used as a backdrop to anything really. I've decided to use the Build a Flower stencils. The other sets I'll be using are the Linen Texture Background Stamp. It can be one of those stamps that perhaps when you see people using it you think, oh yeah, that's great, it's fabulous, I'll have that. But when you get it home, sometimes those ideas can go out of your head and you get a little bit stuck. So I just wanted to give you an idea on how to use that. Um, I love stamping, so this sort of um, stamp is perfect for me. I love to have this sort of thing in my stash. And of course the other set that I'll be using, that I'm not sure that it's in stock at the moment actually, everything else is, um, are the texture stamps. I'm actually going to be using the Ultimate just as a platform to work on because it gives a really nice sort of surface, but this really isn't um, a tutorial in how to use the Ultimate this time around. Um, I'm going to use this this big stamp here but I'm not going to take it off the backing plastic that it actually comes on because that is actually a really good carrier and you can see that it actually makes um, this stamp quite uh, usable as is. I've cut my piece of card which is Lisa Super Smooth card to the same size as the stamp so I'm coming in with the woodland moss which is the green and I'm using the I'm going to use a mixture of the pigment and the blending inks and I'll, hopefully I can explain why as I go along um, and this is just coming out of me having had a play over the last couple of days but I'm going in with the woodland moss which is one of my favourite colours, I do love this um, and I'm going to ink my stamp, as I say I'm leaving the stamp as is on its plate um, now I'm inking it roughly, I mean it's the ink pads give brilliant coverage but I'm not fussed whether the whole stamp surface is actually inked because this is collagey so it's meant to be imperfect as it were. Now as it is that's too much ink and it's going to be too dark and too imposing if I put that straight onto the cardstock in the bank so I'm using, um, now you can use a piece of copy paper to blot that piece of ink but I'm I find that that takes off too much sometimes. So I've got one of these plastic blending mats, which is actually one of Lisa's. I've got the larger one, but you can also use um, Lisa's messy mat as well. It'd be exactly the same thing. So all I'm just going to do is just place that on top and just gently pat it over. And that is going to take off a top layer of the ink. And you can see that onto the blending sheet there. But hopefully you can still see that there is still some ink left on the stamp and that will be perfect to give me a, a light background in the on the stamping card so I'm going to line that up again it doesn't have to be perfect it really doesn't so you don't need to use your stamping platform for this and you don't need a perfect compression and I'm just lightly with my thumb just pressing that out smoothing that over um, you could, if you have a small stamping block, you could just go over and just give even pressure across like that. All I'm using is just a clear stamping block and that just gives you a nice um, even surface. So I'm just going to pull that away. Right now, this is very subtle and I'm hoping, let me just see. Yes, you can see that that is such a subtle pattern in the background there, but it's there. Um, and this, again, is the key to building up your layers. So the next thing I want to do is start stenciling the leaves for you. So I'm going to bring out the leaves. Now, this stencil set has a set of four stencils and it actually comes with dies as well. So you can stencil all the leaves and you can die cut them out and then they can actually be... Um, ideal embellishments for your cards but I'm not using the dies this time around I'm using the stencils 
and I'm only going to be using really just two of the stencils now just because Lisa's given us all four doesn't mean we have to use them and in this case I won't be um, what I want to do is just create a random background with these stencils of the leaves and you can see now why that they're using the peg system that would make that slightly awkward now what I want to do because we've got, still got this ink here I'm going to use one of the um, the bijou brushes and I'm going to pick up that ink so we don't um, waste it and this gives such a soft blending um, opportunity with the brush and the small amount of ink that it gives you a really soft background okay so we come in we pick up just a little bit of ink and this really is a case of um, less is more with this technique um, because I want to have be this you know such a faint uh, pattern in the background so I just pick that ink up now it may look as if you're not actually putting anything on here but believe me as faint as it will be you will actually be laying down this ink and you can see how I've got this stencil if you're not comfortable just holding the stencil as is then of course all you can do is just get yourself some tape attach it anywhere on your stencil and that's secured for you you know that your um, background card isn't going anywhere because of this grippy property of the mat in the background um, and then we can just go in and we can just stencil. Now I know and I can see that there is some detail being put down there. It is very faint, I appreciate that. Um, but we're creating backgrounds and that one is slightly orange. Let me change brush. Okay. And because this is the less of the intricate stencils, it makes it very easy to line up again should your stencil move okay okay so we just lay a little bit more color down on there now at this stage what i want to do is bring in one of these background stamps now i'm going to go to the text again and i'm being utterly predictable <laughs> but hey he gives a super effect and I will bring in my ink pad this time and I will bring in the pigment ink because I'm stamping and it gives me a lighter look and I'm not putting this on a stamping block this time because I want the flexibility of the stamp because I'm actually going to be stamping into the apertures here of this stencil. Now this is just gives you um, a new dimension to your stencils and perhaps a different use to your stamps also because what that is doing I'm obviously only stamping within the apertures that the stencil allows now this can be done through any stencil using any type of stamp so just think of the possibilities that you have there now as I take that away, hopefully you can see uh, that we have a really faint leaf, but we have text just within that leaf, which is contrasting really lovely against the sort of the linen in the background. Now what I've done, I've made sure that the linen is running down this way, and when I text, when I stamp all the text, I shall make sure the text is running as we would read it, sort of left to right. It doesn't matter if I put the stamp the right way around or not, but you can see we have the linen running this way and we have the text running that way so that immediately gives you the collage feel and I think that's just a really super super look and relatively easy it might take a little bit of practice now what we can do next we come in with our stencil number two now we make sure that we have our numbers in the same position so we have one here and two here and it is actually quite straightforward to line those up even though you're not using your peg system now this is why i say i'm possibly only using two of the stencils because as the detail on the stencil gets more intricate it could be slightly more tricky to line up but just for these first two stencils it works really really well now 
This time I'm actually going to be using some of the blending ink. Can you see that on there? Yeah. Um, because this will give the contrast and I'm picking up just a very small amount, just a tiny amount. I'll just swipe some of that off on the stencil first and just work that through the stencil aperture. Now again, less is more here, I would say. Um, so just slowly build this up and I think this is what these Bijou brushes were um, are really good at doing and, and uh, Dawn touched on it yesterday on her live also that the different brushes do actually have different jobs. Um, now you can achieve it if you only have one type of um, brush that is um, you'll just need to go a little bit lighter. Um, but if I take that away now again you can see that there is it is very faint, I do appreciate that, and hopefully you can pick that up on the camera. But this is all about building a background which you don't really want to um, be overwhelming because you're going to have your um, focal points on top of that. Okay, so if we can go on. Now again, the I have the advantage of having the free stencil so I can twist and turn and place that down anywhere I choose. Again, I have a little bit of washi tape. I'm going to use the ink that is already on there and just lightly make sure that I put that through the, the aperture. Now, because we have ink on the brush and we have ink on the stencil, we know that it will be going faint as it is onto the paper. So we don't need to check. Before I carry on, I'm going to stamp again. Now remember to get the stamp. It's going into the pigment ink. It works perfectly well with the blending ink. You will just end up with a bolder look. If that's the look that you want for this, um, then obviously go, you know, that's absolutely fine. But um, I did try the both and I just, I personally preferred the look of the pigment ink for this particular background. Now I'm making sure all the time that the, the text will be running in the same direction. Um, that's just my little foible, foible. that's just, just just for my eye really. If you find that you want it all different ways or you may be using a different pattern in which case, you know, it'd look, it really doesn't matter. Um, but it's just those little attention uh, to detail that I think sometimes just makes you really pleased with your card because sometimes you can look at a card and you think has it worked out well or has it not um, and you're not always sure why sometimes things don't work but say if you just remember these little things sometimes these little bits of attention to detail then I think you can't actually go too well now I've just put my second second stencil on again and I'm just running that over. I shall speed up a little bit because we don't want to dwell on this too much. And you can see that this is building nicely. Okay, come back onto um, stencil number one again. Swing that round like so. I'm going to go off the page slightly just to make that fit. Again, just using the ink that's on there, perhaps pick up a little bit more, just to have that. And actually, once you get going with this, it's actually, you know, you can get quite a speed on and you can actually, it's actually quite enjoyable, especially if you say, build things up lightly, then you know that you've actually you feel like you have control over what you're doing and you can just carry on building and building. Um, and then you'll be so pleased with the result and I think it makes you feel like a real artist. You think, oh look, it's just as good as some of the background papers that I buy sometimes. And the beauty of this, you can do it in the colours that you want, can't you? You can... Um, you're not restricted to the colours that you have in your paper pad. You can build your project exactly as you want it to look. Now, I took up just a little bit too much ink there, you can see. So I'll just pat that off before I go into 
the apertures there because I don't want that too bold, not at this stage. There we are. Now I think I could possibly fit one more on here. Um, I could go that way, but I'm going to go off piste a little bit. I'm just going to clean that off just so we don't have extra ink on there. And oh no, I am going to reverse my stencil because I can. Um, now, if you wanted to die cut these leaves, then I would say that reversing the stencil isn't really an option, obviously, because you're restricted to the shape of the dies. But I'm not die cutting. And all I need to remember is that when I come to use stencil number two, that I need to reverse that as well. So this technique is actually giving you more possibilities on the use of your stencils. So, there we are. And sometimes you do just need to reverse these designs just to make them fit. So, I've done that. I shall come in with my uh, stamping. Now that's a lot fainter, that one. You can see there that that fits really nice. Now I have stencil number two which I need to reverse and again that matches up uh, yes that matches up like oh like so yes it does sorry <laughs> my brain was fooling me then so I pick up a little bit of ink and put that through and we have our background done now, there's all sorts of ways you can carry on playing. You can add bits of ink in the background. Um, what I will do, just very quickly, to show you one little technique. Now this, I shall come in with um, stencil number three. And I shall line it. Uh, hang on, I need to reverse that, don't I? So I have stencil number one and stencil number three. So you can see that this part is a lot more um, detailed. If you wanted to use this and you're not using your ultimate peg system, what you can do just to help you in lining it up, put the easiest stencil down, line it up. So that'll be stencil number one. Now you can tape this down. That's fine. And then... If you wanted to do this, now if it was slightly more intricate, this would be um, a lot easier. You can line up the holes here. Make sure that your numbers are um, corresponding in the right corner. And then you can go ahead and use this stencil layered on top of the first one there. And go in and add that extra bit of detail. And you know that that is lined up. So... That is another way that just proves that you can use the the ultimate system. You can use the layering stencils without the ultimate tool. Now, if you can obviously get a hold of the ultimate tool as well, that would be fantastic um, because it gives you so many more opportunities, but it isn't a deal breaker at this stage. And I can just go in with a slightly darker layer here and just add a tiny bit more detail, which once I move this away, you'll see that it just adds. You can see that that's building in the background. I'm hoping you can you see that. It is very faint. I do appreciate that. But it does all come together. Now, while I'm here, we can... Just do some stamping in the background. I'm going to use uh, my plastic again. I'm just coming in with um, the ink splats on the background textures. This stamp again. This time I should be using my pigment, uh, sorry, my blending ink to stamp because I know that this gives a darker impression. I'm going to blot it off onto the um, blending mat first and stamp into the background and I'm going to stamp a couple of times so I get 
my secondary and third generation stamps and again what this is doing is just building up those design features in the background and this is where you just start playing and just building up that design now I could actually carry on um, but I'm conscious of time and I don't want to overrun too much so what I wanted to do is show you just quickly how we use the flower stencils it's the builder flower stencils they come it's a set of four and I just want to show you quickly and this time I will use my peg system how we can use a similar technique to actually build the flowers now as I said I'm actually going to be using um, orange ink for this which um, it's not something I use very often but I thought that it worked really well so I have my pigment and I have my blending and I am going to use both to blend because um, the pigment ink will give me the really nice subtle base colour which will allow the darker colours um, to be blended onto on top to actually build the details of the flower so I'm going to use the Bijou brush again because that gives me a really nice soft blended look and I shall just block that off and just come on and just very quickly blend that into the background now I think Lisa has touched on this that you don't actually need to blot off the pigment ink quite as much if you're using it to blend um, because that you can see that that is giving me a really pale but even coverage um, again because the details that we're going to put on top we want to be darker so we don't want this base of the flower to be too dark um, but what I will do following on the theme of this live I'm going to be coming in again with a background stamp I'm using this one here and I'm going to create some detail on these petals so again not using um, a stamping block I want to use the flexibility of the stamp which enables me to stamp over the lip of the my last stencil actually that's the reason why I'm not using um, a stamping block and I shall use the pigment ink just pick up that ink I'm going to stamp again into the aperture of the stencil and that's giving me a mottled look on the base of those rose petals now I can use the ink around the outside just to blend into the flower just a little bit more and it doesn't matter if you actually smudge the the stamping that you've got on in there because that is just a background you're not stamping for um, sort of clarity as it were so let's move that away and we come in with stencil number two now this time I will use the blending ink because I want this to be a nice solid layer and you can see that as we start adding these extra details that stamped detail will blend into the background and won't be as prominent but it will still actually be there adding something um, sometimes you don't know you need something in the background until sort of it's, it's not there as it were um, and it's amazing that once you've actually started stamping through your stencils like this you sort of realise that it can just give your design just that bit of an edge sometimes sometimes you, when you feel like there's something missing okay so we come in with stencil number three so this time we can go a little bit heavier again. So I'm picking up lots of ink for my blending ink now because I do want that vibrancy and the coverage on this is just amazing. And you can see there 
Now what I want to do, just before we move on, come in with a small stencil brush and the, uh, the Strawberry Sunday Blending Ink. And I just want to add just a bit of intensity to these details here. You can either come straight in with as much ink as I've used just there or you can blot it off. But honestly, these blending inks are so juicy you really don't need a huge amount. But that just gives a bit of intensity to those details of that rose just there. And when you look at roses, especially roses of this colour, they're very rarely a single tone colour, are they? And I do like these orange, sort of sunsetty type roses. So we come in with our last and final stencil, stencil number four. We'll make sure we have a good intensity of colour going through there. And again, I shall just highlight that with a bit of the Strawberry Sunday because I think the orange and the red really do complement each other so well. Now, on this stencil set, there were four different flowers. And when I stenciled this rose here, I did actually do the rest of the flowers so I, with the same technique. So I'll just show you how different they all look. And I'm actually really loving that orange colour. You look, if I just hold that up, you can see that they all have a bit of stamping in the background, which just gives us a little bit of, a little bit of something different. Hopefully, that's introduced you to Lisa's inks again and just giving you a few more ideas on how to use your different layering stencils. So that's my background card. I've already layered uh, the matting layers onto the card. Now I can use any of these flowers that I've uh, stamped and stenciled onto here because I think this orange works so well with the green. And all we'd need to do is to Stamp our sentiment. Okay, I'm using the Builder Sentiment co um, collection. I was lucky enough to receive the Cloud um, 9 Solid Black the other day. And I've only used it once and my goodness, it didn't let me down. It is every bit as good as Lisa said. And um, again, I was um, an absolute stickler for using Versafine. But this really does rival that, so I think this would definitely be the one that I'll be reaching for time and again now. So, I can stamp that down. Now, when you're stamping sentiments, I would say don't stamp too hard because you don't want to blur the details. You can always go back in and re-stamp, but you can see straight away. Perfect. I really like stamping directly onto my card and I think it's possibly something you, you will notice um, in from my lives also. Now, you can see that we have the finished card like so. Again, with the rose or with any one of the flowers, I'd say that works really well. So that would be your choice. I shall leave you for today. Thanks for joining me and take care everyone.